Theater 5 presents Cry in the Night. got to speak to the landlord. I think we should get a new refrigerator. Yes, Bessie. Nineteen years. The first thing, Monday morning, yeah? It still runs good. Yeah, for how long? And it's so old-fashioned. Nineteen years. We are entitled to a new one. You speak to Morrison. Speak, why should I? Morrison has enough troubles. They are no trouble. They are good tenants. Too good. You tell Morrison either he gives us a new refrigerator or we move out. He won't give and we won't move. With rent control, he can't give. And I can't move from my store. Ah, store. You support it. It don't support you. Twenty-seven years. We've never starved. It's made a living. Not starving isn't living. Otto, two things. First... The refrigerator. And I want a new one like my brother Carl got for his kitchen. Uh, Second, we got to move out of this neighborhood. Please hand me my hairbrush. Uh, uh, here. Yeah. Bessie, you're talking nonsense. If you get a refrigerator, why do you want to get out of the neighborhood? And if you're moving out of the neighborhood, which you ain't, why bother Morrison because your brother Carl has a new refrigerator? Don't be smart, Alec, about my brother. Otto, let me tell you, this neighborhood, it's not fit anymore. Twenty-five years ago, it was different. Now, I'm telling you, deterioration has set in. New people are moving in every day. New people? People are people. I don't recognize a face no more. New people. Uh, I, I meet them in the store, Bessie. And I tell you, the only difference between the new people and the old people is that their names sound different. All they want is to live nice, bring up their children the best they can. Children? Yeah. Let them bring up their children here. But I ain't going to let Erica stay. A girl who is going on 20 don't belong in this crummy neighborhood just because her papa ain't got gumption to pick himself up. Oh, Bessie. Otto, let me tell you, this isn't the only weekend that Erica's going to spend at my brother Carl's in Forest Hills. Every weekend from now on, she will be away. I'll never see her. My daughter. Ah, when she brings home a nice fella from Forest Hills, you will see her. But Bessie... I won't have her hanging around with that, that Gloria Pallucci. Everything that Pallucci girl does, Erica thinks is so smart. Last week she bought a dress like Gloria's, so tight around here and here that she could hardly breathe. With the... the coat, the hat, the shoes. Now she wants the blonde for hair like Gloria. Otto, my daughter is not going to look like a chick. Bessie, don't say what you don't know. All the women all tell me that Gloria... Oh, the women me... are jealous because they all look like beer barrels with hair. Ah, uh, she talks too free, that one. A disgrace to the neighborhood. Coming home every night with a different man. And how do you know who she comes home with? Oh, don't worry. I know. And don't think I don't know how she hangs around your store, Otto. I got a few friends, too. Uh, a lonely girl, Gloria. Lonely. As far as I am concerned, she can stay lonely. If Erica copycats her anymore, I am going to send her to my sister in Buffalo. Bessie, Bessie, uh, listen. Did you hear? Hear? Hear what? Bessie, you heard that. This neighborhood. I told what they did, I tell you. Every day it gets worse. Now maybe you will believe me and get us out of here. You think it's nice for me to sit here and listen to such terrible goings on? Uh, uh, Bessie, uh, shouldn't we do something about it? Why? They bring these things on themselves, the new people. <laughs> Let them deal with it. I, I don't understand. How do you know that this hollering and shrieking comes from the new people and not from the old people? Otto, use your head. That's what I'm using. And it makes no sense. Of course it does. Explain. How do you know it's new people? 
There was never any trouble like this in the old days. Oh, poor girl. Bessie, she needs help. And you are going to give it to her? Otto Schrader galloping on his horse down Delwood Avenue to rescue the maiden. How can you joke? And how can you be so ridiculous? Uh, but I must do something. Sure. I tell you what to do. Mind your own business and go to bed. Oh, Bessie. Don't get involved. Oh, go on. Go have a bite in the kitchen. Uh, I don't know if I feel like it tonight. I left the chicken leg for you. <sighs> All right, then. I'll eat. Eat and don't leave me a mess. Yes, Bessie. I, I forgot to wind up the clock. I'll wind up the clock. A double bolt the door. I'll double bolt the door. Yeah, put out the garbage first. I'll... I'll put out the, the garbage. <laughs> You found the kitchen, Vanna. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you heard that girl? Uh, I haven't been listening. I've been reading. Uh, the police came, an ambulance maybe? I, I couldn't hear in the back. I told you. I was reading. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll put out the light. Yeah, okay. I am beat. Good night. Yeah. If you snore, I will give you a shove and you shut up. If I sleep. Uh, Why shouldn't you sleep? Uh, I'm worried about that screaming. Better worry about your own family. Yeah. I'll, um... I'll speak to Morrison Monday morning. Maybe I can make a deal. I'll get you a refrigerator. <laughs> Bessie, how can you sleep? I can't sleep. Another human being. The world is full of human beings. Well, I can't sleep when I know someone is suffering and is being hurt. So never sleep. All over the world, every minute, every day, people are suffering. I know, I know, but it hurts me. And this is in Brooklyn. This is here. This is right outside my bedroom window. I listen to the screaming. Then I listen to you, to what you say, and I, and I close my ears. I, I close my eyes. I close my heart. It's not right. Oh, you are getting yourself all worked up. It isn't good for you. I, I tell you, Bessie, it's not in me to lie here and not look. Look, you are keeping me awake with your noble talk. You want to look? Get one good look and then come back to bed. Yeah, well, I think I will. Yeah, look with your eyes open. See what kind of a neighborhood you make your family live in. And thank heaven you got a brother-in-law rich enough to live in Forest Hills. So Erica don't have to be here tonight to listen to such frightfulness. But go ahead. Pull up the blind. I can't see very good, Bessie. Not out in the street. But the whole neighborhood is up. Uh, across the street, the Ryans are looking out the window. Where are they looking? I can't tell, but... Paddy and Margaret are both watching something. And the corner of the curtain, the Millers is pulled back. Yeah? I think it's the old lady. There's all the blinds pulled at the tailors. And, and those new people, I think their name is Richie. But you can't see nothing? No, no. Ah, yes, yes, I can. Now I can. What? What? Just over in the shadows near their private house way down the corner. There's a girl fighting a man. How do you know them? I, I can't see that good. Just the, the, the two figures struggling. Looks like there's something in the man's hand. I, I can see by the streetlight when he turns. A knife, I bet. They don't stop at anything in this neighborhood uh, the now. Girl, the girl is kicking and scratching and, and biting Bessie. And there she goes. She's getting away, coming towards here again. <laughs> man's catching up with her now, right under the streetlight. I think I know who it is. Who? 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 The, the, the man? No, no, no. The, the girl. The blonde hair. Sometimes it's caught in the streetlight. Yeah, yeah. It must be. It is. It's Gloria Palucci. <laughs> Woodrow Wilson once said, freedom exists only where the people take care of the government. In our democratic society, the people are the voice of the government through freedom of speech, of the press, and through freedom to assemble, we know and make sure that our laws are just. The price for our freedom? The responsibilities we share to maintain it. 
But many people of the world do not enjoy either freedom or personal rights, and they too must pay a price. In obedience to a dictatorship, acceptance of the demands of their government, and subjection to slavery. So it becomes the duty of each of us who are members of a free society to spread the word of freedom throughout the world, wherever it is needed. We can do this best by maintaining our example of a people's government, a people's freedom. <laughs> I can't see her no more. But that blonde hair, it could only be Gloria Pellucci, Bessie. Otto, what are you doing? Well, but, uh, I look like I'm doing. I'm, I'm getting dressed. You are going up there? No, I'm getting dressed to get a drink of water in the bathroom. What do you think? Don't be ridiculous, Otto. You are looking for trouble. That man out there, who knows who he is? You say he has a knife? You are going to challenge him? The girl's being hurt, perhaps killed. I read in the paper about another Badinsky like you. He stopped the fight, Otto. And you know what? He landed in jail because he hurt the man on the best coast. Now be smart. Don't get involved. How can I not get involved? But why involve your family? Did I say anything about my family? Otto, how can you not involve your family? You get hurt. Who takes care of you? The Red Cross? No, I do. Who else? It's Gloria Pellucci. She's not your wife, not your daughter, and she's not your business. Nobody asked Gloria Pellucci to move into this neighborhood. We were better off before she came, and we'll be better off when she goes. She's no relative of ours. You go to church on Sunday, Bessie. You hear the minister say we are all God's children. Well, we are God's children on Saturday night as well as on Sunday morning. At least I'm going to call the police. Over my dead body. You know what happens when you call the police? Questions. Lots of questions. I got nothing to hide. I just want to help that poor girl. Sure, sure, Mr. Hero. They will ask your name and you will tell them. They'll ask you the girl's name and you tell them. What's wrong with that? How do you know the girl's name? A stranger? I'll say she's my daughter's friend. Bessie, please, now out of my way. Otto, some father... You let your daughter's name get into the papers with a girl like that? Bessie. You will do no such thing. And don't think you can say she's your friend either. The women have already told me how she makes up to you in the store. Like you weren't twice her age and a respectable married man. Gloria's a good girl. Maybe she talks wild, but what is talk? Should she be killed for talk? How do you know she's good? Otto. Oh, stop it. No, no, get out of my way. Otto. You told me the whole block is up. Let them call the police. Maybe somebody did already. Oh, Lady Miller, let her be the busybody. But maybe they haven't. Maybe everybody is saying like you, don't get involved. And all the while, the girl is fighting off a wild man with maybe a knife. Bessie, don't you have any feeling for humanity? Sure I have, for my humanity. You with your ideals and your feelings and your highfalutin sentiments. Where has it got now, you? Bessie, please. A shabby little store in a crummy old neighborhood that you can die in. Otto, do you know what it means if you call the police? Hours of questioning. Who, what, when, where? So? Not only now, not only now, but later in court. And sometimes there's a second and a third trial. And sometimes it might be a gangster involved. And they don't like you so good if you testify against them. Ha! Ah, what they could do to your store. How can you weigh these petty things against a human life? These petty things ain't so petty to me. Who takes care of the store while you are in court, at the police station, or thrown in the East River? Me! Yes, 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 me! Mr. Idealist! You are not volunteering yourself. You are volunteering me. No, Bessie. You! You think you have a great concern for humanity. Well, what you have is no concern for your own family. Ah, I'm going to call the police. Otto, I warn you. Bessie, take your hand off the gun. Otto! So, help me, Otto. If you dial again, I will pull the wire from the wall. You are hurting me. Hurting me for that girl. Take your hand off, Bessie. Don't think I don't know. 
If it was me, you wouldn't raise a finger. Just because he's a flozy with our short skirts, peroxide hair, and her blouse cut all the way down to here. You are just like all the other men. That's all you care about. Coming home every night with a different man. Well, she's not getting anything she didn't ask for. For the last time, Bessie, take your hand off the phone. No, no, I won't. <laughs> Fighting with her own wife? How can you be so selfish? With me and my and mine, the world will come to no good end. Fine boards don't make a living. <sighs> take care of your own and let everybody else take care of his own. Uh, what? Otto? Tell, tell the phone. There. You've done it. Me? What are you blaming me for you, now? You pulled the telephone wire. You must have made a short circuit. Nobody asked you to grab the telephone. Well, maybe it's for us. Take, take your hands off and I will answer it. Nobody calls us in the middle of a Saturday night. Ah, yeah. Yeah, okay, Mr. Smarty. Now we'll... Never know who it was. It was nobody. You you just made a short circuit. Ah, uh, Otto, I know who it was. It was Erica. Maybe she met a nice, rich fella at her Uncle Carl's, so she called to tell her mama and papa. <laughs> Otto, this time, answer. Sure, answer a short circuit. Ah, oh, well. Hello? Hello? Bessie, it's nobody. Hello, Otto. Yeah. It's Carl. Don't answer your telephone. Well, we were asleep, Carl. Then it stopped ringing. Carl? Let me talk to you. Uh, Carl, your sister wants to talk to you. Hello? Hello, Carl. How come you are calling so late? I was expecting a call from you, Bessie. From me, Carl? I didn't promise. Of course you didn't promise. Erica did. Erica? Yeah, sure, Erica. You know, I, I gave her a little present when she came here. A, pr a present? Oh, not very much. Ten or fifteen bucks. Oh, Carl, you're very nice to your niece. Otto, my brother gave Erica fifteen dollars. And the next thing I know, she tells Irma and me that she changed her mind. She don't want to stay with us this weekend. Oh, I apologize for Erica, Carl. She should be nicer to you and Irma. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I mean. I mean, she said she was going home. Home? Home? When? Erica's coming home. She, she left about nine. I said, call here when you get home. So right away she forgets. No, Carl, no. She's not here. She didn't come in. Are you sure she said she was coming home? Straight home? Uh, not straight home. She said she was going to uh, an all-night uh, beauty parlor first. A beauty parlor? How? What? Where? Uh, she was going to use my present to surprise you, Bessie. Surprise? What kind of a surprise? You don't know? Carl, I don't know anything. Except Erica ain't here. Erica ain't here. Erica ain't here. Funny, she, she said she'd be home around midnight. She was going to this beauty parlor in Manhattan that keeps open all night. A, a beauty parlor on a Saturday night? Why, Carl? Why? She was going to have the color of her hair changed to blonde. Oh, my God. No, Carl, no. Not blonde. Not blonde. Oh, why not, Bessie? She's a smart girl. She knows that the really up-and-coming guys go for blonde. Oh, hold it, Carl. There's the door. Otto, go yep. let Erica in. Coming. Coming. Bessie. Bessie, it's, it's Gloria Pellucci. She's all right. She's all right. Oh, Mr. Schroeder, Mrs. Schroeder, something terrible has happened to your Erica. Something terrible. She's... Yes, she's... I know, <laughs> Gloria. No. I know. The blonde here. I saw it. I know. I saw it. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Hello, this is Hans Conry. 
On a dark night in 1818, three people sat talking. They were the poet, Shelley, Mary, his wife, and another poet, Lord Byron. As their conversation turned to subjects more and more mysterious, they decided that each would write a ghost story. Later, as Mary Shelley lay sleeping, she had a terrifying dream in which she saw a monstrous-looking creature bending over the bed of a man who might have been his creator. Suddenly she had the idea for her ghost story and set to work writing it. Soon she'd finished a tale about a young scientist who collected the parts of a human body from graveyards and dissecting laboratories, put them together according to his own recipe, and brought this hideous assemblage to life. Later, the young scientist was to regret that he'd not turned his endeavors toward something more acceptable, for the being he had created was too hideous for polite society, and eventually turned on his creator. The young scientist was, of course, Dr. Frankenstein, and his name is now applied to creations which backfire. Purists will point out that Frankenstein is used incorrectly to refer to the monster instead of his creator, but that causes me no concern. After all... What is in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name looks better. Theater 5 has presented Cry in the Night, written by Raphael David Blau and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Vicki Vola, Louis Van Ruten, Marilyn Moore, and Ben Yaffe. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. Thank you.